<laughs> Member of Southport. Uh, Mr. Deputy. Mr Deputy Speaker, I rise to make a, a brief contribution to the debate on the Director's Liability Reform Amendment Bill of 2012. Uh, when the Newman government was elected by the people of Queensland in March 2012, we were given a mandate to slash regulatory burdens and red tape left over after a decade of labour mismanagement. This legislation highlights why we were granted that man mandate and highlights why Queensland businesses and the Queensland economy have been struggling under the heavy burden of Labor's red tape. The Director's Liability Reform Amendment Bill 2012 reduces the number of offences under, stat under statute from 3,800 to around 280. For the benefit of my Labor colleagues, whose legacy we are still untangling today, I will repeat, repeat that uh, incredible figure. The number of provisions that impose liability on directors for offences committed by their corporations will reduce from 3,800 to 280, should this bill pass tonight. One can only imagine the cautious approach of a director in this state if there are some 3,800 different offences for which you can automatically be held liable. This represents a severe impact on the innovation, profitability and productiveness of corporations. Is it any wonder the Queensland economy was stalling under the former Labor government? The wheels of business slowly grinding to a halt under the heavy regulatory burdens forced upon them. And, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, in my role as the Assistant Minister for Planning Reform, uh, it's been a great pleasure to build on the work of uh, my predecessor and Ian Walker uh, as we've worked as a government to strip away uh, many of the, the regulations and the overburden of uh, regula re regulation from the previous government uh, in planning. And uh, the, the, the word that we're getting and the comment we're getting from the industry, in fact, uh, just this evening, uh, we had the Property Industry Foundation here at uh, Parliament House uh, for an official launch uh, of a new charity that the uh, industry have created in, in Queensland. And it was very pleasing to hear Kath McDermott and others from the industry uh, talk with real confidence and, and uh, with, with, with a real sense of hope and enthusiasm about how things are starting to turn. Uh, just last week, I had the privilege of uh, addressing a group of uh, business leaders out at Springfield. Uh, and I was uh, really surprised and, and encouraged to hear how positive they were uh, about the reforms of our government and the impact that that's uh, having uh, now on, on the development industry and the flow on that that's starting to have in new house starts and, and new homes in Queensland. And, uh, and, and I understand that uh, the Property Council and uh, ANZ Bank uh, will release tomorrow uh, uh, the latest figures on, uh, on business confidence in Australia uh, and it will come as no surprise uh, that uh, those figures tomorrow when released uh, will highlight a significant leap uh, in consumer confidence and business confidence in Queensland. Uh, in fact, uh, I haven't seen the actual figures, but I'm told that, uh, that, that they will be amongst the highest uh, increase in, in uh, business confidence uh, in Australia of any uh, state. Uh, and so what that says is that uh, these reforms and the measures our government are undertaking uh, are, are on the right track. And uh, I congratulate the Attorney General uh, for his innovation and his willingness to tackle some of these issues, uh, but also the courage that we've seen him demonstrate this week uh, in, in the face of uh, making some very tough uh, decisions uh, and driving some very strong legislative reform uh, in respect of uh, sex offenders in our state and uh, serious criminal gangs. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, this bill will cut the red tape and bring Queensland into line with a national commitment to a more consistent approach to directors' liability across Australian jurisdictions. Of course, this bill identifies the important categories of offences for which directors' liability is retained, recognising there will always be circumstances in which a director should be held to account. These include animal cruelty, child protection, fire and building safety, public health, uh, and public health and safety, revenue protect, protection, marine pollution, environmental and heri heritage protection uh, and unauthorised mining activities. A key component of this legislation is the principle that a director should only be pers personally liable for a corporate offending if they have encouraged or assisted in the commission of the offence or have otherwise been negligent or reckless as regards to its commission. However, the legislation provides for cases where it may be appropriate to ask directors to prove that they have taken reasonable steps to prevent the corporation's offending. This is a sensible piece of legislation from the Attorney-General, and I congratulate him on his consistent work to improve the productivity and profitability of Queensland businesses as we work to free them from the strangling red tape left over from the former government. 
Mr Deputy Speaker, I support the Director's Liability Reform Amendment Bill of 2012, uh, and it's my great pleasure to stand in the House and speak in support of that. Member for Fernie Grove.